I always take the example of Japan, where we see labor shortages in every single sector. And the same goes for Europe and US. We have seen in the past really a lot of supply shortages due to labor shortages. It is clear that the shrinking active population and the aging population at the same time will leave us no other choice than automize and robotize as much and as fast as possible. Moreover, this will not be limited to the manufacturing industry only. Also in the service industries, robots will play an even more important role. Again, for Japan, there will be a shortage of 400,000 nurses. So that's also the reason why you see in Japan already these so-called robo nurses that take over a lot of the tasks from the traditional nurses. Again, this demographic trend will need, will urgently need more robotization, more automation in order to be able to continue to cope with all the shortages that we see in the manufacturing industry and in the service industry. As a father of three, I'm really concerned about the environment. And I really believe that innovative technology will help us to tackle these challenges. Using advanced sensors, for example, to measure air quality or water quality, transmitting the data into the cloud and then analyzing these data with artificial intelligence or machine learning to immediately uh, create reactions. And that is really one of the ways that we can use technology in our advantage. Apart from these environmental and demographic trends, there is another mega trend that is really driving this strategy. That's really the technological revolution that we are currently living. The speed at which technology has evolved is really unrivaled. As we have currently almost unlimited access to computing power, to storage, a lot of new technologies are being developed. Think of Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and machine learning, advanced battery use, move to the cloud, Cobots, which are kind of an advanced form of robots, of the more traditional robots. All these technologies will potentially provide enormous revenue streams. And this type of strategy is really well placed to benefit from these trends. Yes, of course, we take that into consideration. And in fact, we are using two negative screens and two positive screens. The first negative screen is in fact the exclusion of companies that have breached the UN Global Compact. On top of that, the second negative screen is really excluding those companies that are involved in controversial activities. In the positive screens, we are favoring those companies that based on our own ESG analysis are scoring well in the stakeholder analysis and the second one is the business activities analysis. In the business activities analysis, we are trying to assess how a company or rather the products or the services of a company are interacting with the resource depletion, with climate action, with health and well-being and so on. So after all, these companies that are scoring well on these two positive screens, they are favored. I think there are a couple of reasons to choose this strategy. The first one, in my opinion, one of the most important one is really the exposure to three very important secular long-term trends. Another reason to choose this strategy is because of the very experienced management team. Myself, I am managing this type of strategies for more than 30 years. And together with Felix de Maagd and Nathaniel Weichert that have joined the team during the last three years, we form a very solid and experienced management team. The third reason to invest in this strategy is really that most of the end markets in which this strategy is investing are growing by double digits. 
numbers. To give you an example, the investments in artificial intelligence will grow by 20% plus for the coming years. And finally, we have also an advisory board in place. This advisory board consists of academic people with business experience and they help us to understand the technological evolutions in this very particular market.